Parker's Law, what it is, and how it came to be. House Bill 607 is an act to create Parker's Law, to create the crime of fentanyl delivery resulting in death, to provide the penalty for such crime and provide exceptions for those who seek medical attention, to define certain terms and for related purposes. we we'll go over it really quickly. It's kind of self-explanatory. Section 2 is, a person who delivers or calls the delivery of fentanyl with knowledge of the fentanyl commits the crime of fentanyl delivery resulting in death when they, as a result of the unlawful delivery of fentanyl in exchange for anything of value to another person, death to a person results from the approximation cause of injection, oral ingestion, or an inhalation of fentanyl. Upon conviction for violating the provisions of this section, the person shall be sentenced to imprisonment no less than 20 years to the term of life in the custody of Mississippi Department of Correction. For the purpose of this act, only any person who in good faith without malice and in the absence of evidence of an intent to defraud seeks medical assistance for someone experiencing a fentanyl overdose shall not be charged or prosecuted for a violation of this section if the evidence for the charge was gained as a result of the seeking of medical assistance. For the purpose of this act, fentanyl means fentanyl and any fentanyl related substance to include fentanyl analogs and is set forth in Article 3, Chapter 29 of 41. In exchange for anything of value does not apply to the act of sharing fentanyl with the sharing result in the approximate cause of a person's death under this section. This law did go into effect. It went into effect on July the 1st of 2022. It was put in place to go after the people who are profiting from fentanyl and causing death from fentanyl. As I stated previously in the past, these laws are put into place for a reason. And Parker's Law is the perfect example. Asked why I say if it's in the law books, something happened. It's there for a reason. According to Channel 12 WJTV, Parker's Law is about a Mississippi College student by the name of Parker. I'm assuming I'm probably going to mess this name up, but I'll put it in the, down here. Rodden, Rodden Ball, who passed away in 2014 from an overdose. His mother has shared his story, was the main person. Person pushing for the Parker's Law. As we go through this and explain this, be mindful that she lost her son. And when I break this down and go over it, there's no disrespect to them. Have them in your heart and your prayers because I'm sure that this has been an ongoing battle for them to get this law passed. And now being publicized, it's through. She, I'm sure she's missing her kid and thinking about him every day. This is from druginducedhomicide.org. It says, Forever 22. My son Parker was 22 and had everything to live for. He was such a beautiful and caring soul that showed his love and kindness so much to everyone. On August 9, 2014, I helped my son pack to move back to college. I never knew he would never come back home. That evening when he got to Starkville, Mississippi, back to his house that he lived with four other roommates, it was a two-story house and he had went in the back door of the house. There was a fantasy football game party going on that a few of his roommates were having. They had no idea that Parker was even there. One of the persons that was at the party was an old high school friend of Parker's. He had given Parker two tabs of a synthetic drug 25-B. We'll stop right here for a second. Never heard of anything being called synthetic drug 25-B, but I was able to find a I-25B-MBOH and it's being sold as a powdered form of LSD over in Europe. It states that 25B-MBOH is a potent synthetic drug with psychedelic and stimulant type effects. But I saw another news article saying that he died from an LSD type of drug. So I'm wondering if these news articles or the ruling that this was done in an older time because the actual law, Parker's Law, is going over the drug fentanyl. So I'm not quite sure where the correlation of this is, which I haven't seen no talk screen report or anything. So I'm assuming that he probably died from a fentanyl based drug and they thought it was something else or told him it was a psychedelic. That happens. He goes on to say this was a deadly synthetic drug that was 100 times stronger than morphine. So a synthetic form of morphine would actually be fentanyl, not a powdered off brand of LSD. Parker's Law states fentanyl in the law, so it's a safe bet to say that they are meaning a fentanyl related drug was the cause of the death. I could see where in 2014 that a college town that would assume the death was caused by psych psychedelic and in 2014 fentanyl was a known street drug and it was in the early stages of being being mixed with, with other street drugs, meaning that it was at the early stages of everything being laced with fentanyl. Most of the drugs that you see now on the streets have at some form or another come in contact with fentanyl. All right, 
It goes back to say, after taking the drug, Parker started talking in circles. A boy had went to the so-called friend slash dealer that gave this drug to Parker and told him that he was worried about Parker talking in circles. The dealer said he was just having a bad trip. Then after that, Parker started running into walls and shelves. He was sitting on the stairs bleeding from his forehead and knees. All the while the dealer was seeing everything happening, others did not know that, that he took the drugs and thought that Parker was drunk. Parker was not known by his friends to do drugs. I mean, that's possible. I mean, he's getting away from home, going to college, experiencing new things. May not have been a drug user. Parker had made a wrong decision that night to try this drug and having no idea what he was taking. Later, Parker ended up upstairs with his roommates where he ended up falling into convulsions. His roommates went to help. One of his roommates said that the dealer saw it and said he couldn't watch this and went back downstairs to smoke a hookah pipe. When Parker started turning blue, the roommates yelled to call 911. All right, the signs of a fentanyl overdose are lower, low blood pressure, drowsy, dizziness, nausea, and vomiting, limp body changes in pupil size cold and clammy skin blue colored lips and fingernails slowed or stopped breathing deceased heart rate reduced or loss of consciousness coma or death when people were asked to explain what they saw in fentanyl overdoses it was a person's lips immediately turning blue gurgling sounds when breathing stiffening in the body of seizure like activity foaming of the mouth confusion or strange behavior before the person becomes unresponsive in her story that she's putting in here, you can see a lot of the overdose signs. I've seen almost every stage of opioid or fentanyl overdose all the way from taking too much to actual death. Something I don't think the average person actually realizes goes on or should see, especially if it's your friends, family members, or anything of that nature. The gurgling they're talking about, we also call it the death rattle because it's, it's not necessarily a snore. It's more into the deep throat type of gargle. If you've ever heard it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You're on the verge of pretty much dying. What they're talking about, the pupils change. Before we give somebody Narcan, the first thing we do is we open up their eyelids to see their pupils, and that's another way to tell. All right, the dealer left and went back to his apartment. When the ambulance got there, they tried working on him, but Parker died. The roommates told the police who gave Parker something and when and where they could find him. The police went to the rest of the dealer. The police said on the dealer's phone, it showed where when he got back to his apartment, he looked up what to do for someone having a bad trip. Then with not even a second later, he was looking up about Mario Kart. He started playing video games. Skylar O. Kelly from Madison, Mississippi was charged with drug trafficking of 425 dosage units of synthetic deadly drugs and depraved heart murder. He was convicted at trial of both. Then in appeals court, the drug trafficking was affirmed and the murder charges were overturned. This is where it gets tricky when why I say there's a reason for every law. If it's not written in the law, then they may actually get away with it. And that's kind of what happened here and this is where Parker's law comes from. There was no law in Mississippi to uphold a murder charge for a drug dealer causing a death. The assistant DA called me with the decision of the appeals court. He told me that the trial was one of the hardest emotionally he had ever prosecuted. He told me that Mississippi should have a law to hold drug dealers accountable for deaths. He told me we should have a Parker's law. When he said that, it hit me so hard because after Parker's freshman year in college, I had a talk with him about what he wanted to do in life when he told me I just want to make a difference in the world. This was my meaning in life. Now to see that my state had this law. It had been four years now and I'm getting closer than ever now is getting this bill passed. Meanwhile, Skylar O'Kelly is serving his second year of 10-year mandatory sentence for drug traffic. My beautiful son never got to see his dreams come true, but as his mom, I will make one dream come true of his. Parker's Law will make a difference. I love and miss you, my sweet son. It's sad that Parker had to die to hold drug dealers accountable for causing deaths from the drugs that they deal. There's a lot to be said about drugs and death, but on this video is not the place. I think it's safe to say we could say that Parker would be proud of his mom and for pushing this to the point where it is actually a law now. So in these times, let's keep them in your thoughts and prayers, and we're sorry for y'all's loss. And as always, thank you for watching. Have a great day.